Junji Ito is one of the most recognized names in the manga industry right now. Not just as a horror manga creator, but in the entirety of the industry, his name stands out as one of the most recognizable, and his style as well. In fact, I can tell you that not only people who are interested in manga and anime recognize Ito, but people who have next to no interest in either medium recognize the name and his artwork. I can say that because I have friends who don't care what uh, whatsoever about anime or manga, but they know Junji Ito when they see it. Now this is all in, in no small thanks to publishers like Viz Media, who have gone out of their way over the past decade to push the publication of so many of his works in English for us to enjoy. And with that, not only do we have tons of Ito works that are populating our shelves, but we also go into our local Hot Topic or Box Lunch store and see tons of Ito merchandise, from shirts and sweaters, to socks and pajamas, to drinking glasses, coffee mugs, shot glasses, and even Junji Ito stationery. There is all kinds of Ito merchandise out there. Two years ago, I made a video about Junji Ito and all of his works that have been released in English, and everything that we have yet to have seen released in English. Two years has passed, and I think that that's ample time for me to make an updated version of this video. There are plenty of new things that have been published in English that we can talk about, and there are also plenty of new things that he's written that have come out in Japan that are not yet in English. But on top of that, I uncovered a lot of stuff that I unfortunately didn't have in that video, things that we haven't had yet in English. So there was a lot of very good reason for me to sit down and make a new video going over Junji Ito's entire bibliography. So once again, just like that video, I'm going to be going through everything that we have of his available in English, and then I'll talk about everything of his that is not yet available in English. This is how this video is going to work, and it is going to be a long one, so there will be uh, timestamps in the description if you need them. But we're going to run through all of his releases in English first chronologically in the order that they were released in English, but I'm going to be focusing specifically on the newest edition of every release. So that means that we're going to be starting with 2013's hardcover release of Uzumaki, and then going all the way through to the upcoming releases for this year of 2023, such as the Soichi Collection. Now, I will be covering previous printings of stories, so I will be talking about the paperback editions of Uzumaki and Gyo, and I will be talking about the lesser-known releases of his from publishers like Dark Horse and Comics One. As we get to the end of everything that's coming out through the rest of 2023, I'll then transition into talking about my favorite part of the video, everything that we do not yet have in English. The most exciting part about that is not only did I find a lot of things that I missed in my previous video that I get to talk about now, but I can tell you exactly what story collections remain to be published and exactly what stories are going to be collected within. Now we've got a lot to cover and this is going to be a pretty long video, so I hope that you're comfortable as we dive into the bibliography of Junji Ito. One last quick note, uh, I won't be showing a lot of interior work because the license holders in Japan are often really particular about that kind of stuff and I don't want this video to be taken down, specifically because a lot of his work is licensed in Japan by Shogakukan and Shogakukan is known to be really, uh, really particular about that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in and like I said, we're starting with the 2013 release of Uzumaki. Ten years ago now, Viz Media released the first in what would become a line of Junji Ito hardcovers, with the 3-in-1 edition of Uzumaki. This was the first time that the entirety of this series was collected into a single volume. This oversized all-in-one edition contained the entire story about a town that is overtaken by a curse that terrorizes its people with mysterious and horrific spirals. This story is 
one of, if not Junji Ito's most well-known, and for very good reason, because it is also, in my opinion and the opinion of many others, one of his best. If you've never read Ito before and you happen to be watching this video, I would recommend Uzumaki as a good place to start so you can get familiarized with his style of writing as well as his artistic style. Uzumaki has before been adapted into a live-action film, and there is an animated adaptation that has been in the works that's meant to come from Adult Swim. Now, speaking of adaptations, just another aside, uh, I'm going to mention when things have been adapted, but I'm not going to mention when the short stories have been adapted, uh, because I didn't feel like tracking down every single story was that was adapted for the 2018 Junji Ito Collection anime, or this year, 2023's Junji Ito Maniac. So, back to Uzumaki. Now, there were two previous editions of Uzumaki that were published as well by Viz. The first one was published from 2001 to 2002, the second from 2007 to 2008. The first printing of the first edition of the first volume had a different cover, and then when it went back to print, the cover changed from being a red cover with black text to being a full color image on the cover, and that style was retained for volumes two and three. However, for the 2007 to 2008 reprint of Uzumaki, they used black covers for all three volumes with red text. Next, we jump ahead to 2015, where Viz Media released another all-in-one hardcover for the story Gyo. Gyo is another one of Ito's more well-known works. Uh, it was a two-volume series. This collected, like I said, an all-in-one edition, and it's the story of these strange walking fish that come ashore and start to attack people. They soon find that these fish are are being controlled more or less by biomechanical organisms, and soon they start controlling things other than just the fish. Gyo is one of my other favorite works of Junji Ito's because I think that it's miraculously terrifying in a grotesque way, but at the same time he really balances terror along with comedy in that a lot of the circumstances from Gyo are inherently funny, and I know people disagree with that because I've had people disagree with me on that fact before, but horror and comedy go hand in hand, and Junji Ito knows that and displays that very well in Gyo. Slight spoilers for that story, there are just inherently funny moments in Gyo, uh, such as sharks stomping down doors and fart-powered biomechanical machines. They're just inherently funny concepts. Um, Gyo has also been adapted into an animated short feature. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it was an OVA or not, but it was a, a short animated feature. Um, and there were also two previous editions of Gyo that were published in English, the first being in 2003 to 2004, and those early editions also had full-color cover art, uh, similar to the first edition of Uzumaki, and then the 2007 to 2008 editions of Gyo had similar black covers with red text like the second editions of Uzumaki. The Gyo collections, as well as containing that entire story, do collect two short stories, uh, one of my favorite and where my shirt comes from, uh, The Enigma of Amigara Fault, as well as The Sad Story of the Principal Post. Moving on to our next 2015 release, Viz put out their first short story collection with fragments of horror. Horror. This hardcover was a beautifully put together volume with a really nice slip cover and contained a number of stories of Junji Ito's that we'd never seen before in English. These stories were Futon, Wooden Spirit, Tomio Red Turtleneck, Gentle Goodbye, Dissection Chan, Blackbird, Magami Nanakuse, and Whispering Woman. The next year, 2016, we would get our next release from Viz Media, and that was the hardcover version of Tomie. Tomie had been published in English twice before. There was a 2001 edition released by publisher Comics One across two volumes uh, that were part of Comics One's Junji Ito Horror comic collection. And then in 2006, Dark Horse Comics published parts one and two as their Museum of Terror. But it was Viz Media who would put out this all-in-one hardcover that matched the style of the hardcovers they had already released for Uzumaki and Gyo. If you're unfamiliar with Tomie, this is another, I know I'm saying like these are my favorites of his, but this one 
is notable to me for being the one that actually scared me the most when I was reading it. I think it might have had to do with the environment because I read a lot of these stories when I was in a cabin in the middle of the woods by myself in the dark reading by candlelight. So I probably set myself up for that, but I loved reading this and it scared the crap out of me. The stories within all focus on Tomie, an immortal succubus who has the ability to seduce nearly any man and drive them to do anything for her. And despite Despite how many times she's killed, she always comes back for more. Tomie is an iconic character at this point, not just of Junji Ito's, but an iconic character in her own right. And she also has been adapted into nine films. Nine films, and I'm going to list them real quick, but there's Tomie, Tomie Another Face, Tomie Replay, Tomie Rebirth, Tomie Forbidden Fruit, Tomie Beginning, Tomie Revenge, Tomie vs. Tomie, and Tomie Unlimited. There hasn't been a new Tomie movie in over like a decade, uh, so it seems like the film series might be dead by this point, even though Tomie is not supposed to be able to die. Haha. <laughs> but there had been rumblings about more Tomie material to come, and we did see some Tomie uh, adapted for the Junji Ito uh, Maniac anime that came out earlier this year. Moving into 2017, we get Shiver, Junji Ito Selected Stories. I want you to put this in your back pocket because it's going to come back later in the video. Uh, that Shiver is titled Junji Ito Selected Stories, that, but that beyond this, these hardcovers that are made up of a bunch of short stories are going to be titled Junji Ito Story Collection. It's not because Viz Media decided to change their naming conventions for these volumes after the first one. There is a reason why, and I will elaborate on that later. But for now, Let's just look at what was inside of Shiver. There were a number of short stories within this volume, including Used Record, Shiver, Fashion Model, Hanging Blimp, Marionette Mansion, Painter, The Long Dream, Honored Ancestors, Greased, and Fashion Model, Cursed Frame. The next year, 2018, we got our first Junji Ito story collection hardcover with Frankenstein. Of course, Frankenstein being Junji Ito's adaptation of the classic Mary Shelley horror story, uh, that story took up much of this hardcover, the rest of it being made up of a bunch of short stories. Uh, so the volume itself has the stories Frankenstein, Neck Spectre, Bog of Living Spirits, Pen Pal, Intruder, The Strange Tale of Oshikiri, The Strange Tale of Oshikiri, The Walls, the Hell of the Doll Funeral, Face Firmly in Place, Boss Nan Nan, Hide and Seek with Boss Nan Nan. So that's everything that was in Frankenstein. And then next year in 2019, we got Smashed Junji Ito Story Collection. This collection has the following short stories within Blood Sucking Darkness, Ghosts of Prime Time, Road, Earthbound, Death Row Doorbell. The Mystery of the Haunted House, The Mystery of the Haunted House, Soichi's version, Soichi's Beloved Pet, In Mirror Valley, I Don't Want to Be a Ghost, Library Vision, Splendid Shadow Song, and of course, Smashed. 2019 would be the first year where we actually had two Junji Ito releases since 2015, uh, as after Smashed, we also got Junji Ito's adaptation of Osamu Desai's legendary novel, No Longer Human. Originally published in Japan as a three-volume series, Viz Media released No Longer Human in a single hardcover, and this is a fantastic story. I think that uh, while it's not the typical horror fare that you get from Junji Ito, his style of storytelling lends itself very well to Osamu Desai's classic novel, and I, I very highly recommend it, especially if you're someone who's not a big horror manga fan or not a big fan of horror in general, this kind of toes the line with horror and is more a psychological um, terror series. Very highly recommended and it's beautifully told by Ito. It's my personal favorite adaptation of uh, No Longer Human. I know some people like some of the other versions like Usamaro Furuya's version, but for my money, this is the best one. The one aggravation that I have with this is that it is the only hardcover, aside from the art book that I'll talk about in a second here, that was not released in the same trim size as every other one of these hardcovers that Biz has put out. It is slightly smaller, which is a little bit annoying. I'm sure there's a reason why it had to be published in that size. 
but I just wish that it lined up on the shelf with the rest of them. Now, like I said, next up we're talking about the Junji Ito art book, Twisted Visions. This is uh, was the first release of 2020, and 2020 brought us not one, not two, but three new Junji Ito releases. Of course, the art book is in a much larger trim, it's like a magazine trim size, which is standard for art books. It is a very beautiful one at that. If you are not even a fan of Ito's narratives and his stories, I highly recommend picking up the art book if you just want to have something to kind of celebrate and appreciate his art with. There's plenty of fantastic representation of his artwork uh, shown on these great oversized pages in full color. Now the next 2020 release was Venus in the Blind Spot, which in Japan is kind of billed as a greatest hits type of volume containing not just a bunch of his stories, but also some additional posters and colored artwork. For instance, it does feature the cover art for the single volume editions of No Longer Human that we didn't get in English. Uh, this one does double dip with Gyo as it includes the Enigma of Amigara Fault and the Sad Tale of the Principal Post, but it also includes includes the following stories that are not collected elsewhere. Billions Alone, The Human Chair, and An Unearthly Love, both uh, adapted from stories by Erogawa Ranpo, Venus in the Blind Spot, The Licking Woman, Master Umez and Me, referring to uh, Kazuo Umez, another horror manga creator, How Love Came to Professor Kirida by Robert Hitchens, and Keepsake, as well as the two stories I mentioned that were in Gyo. The final 2020 release was the volume Remina. Remina is different because it's not a short story release. This is a full volume length sci-fi story about a heavenly body that starts causing apocalyptic happenings to the earth that may have relation to the young woman that it has been named after. Remina. This one's fantastic and it's a shorter length than the single volume full length stories uh, like Uzumaki and Gyo. Uh, this one is, I, I think, around 200 pages long, so it's a pretty quick read, and if you're into sci-fi horror, this one is really going to scratch that itch. Um, I do recommend it. Th this was a great one. 2021, uh, and this is where we pick up with stories. These are releases that I didn't cover in my previous video, starting off with 2021's first release, which was Love Sickness. Love Sickness is our third Junji Ito story collection hardcover. The first five stories are the five parts of the main feature titled Love Sickness. Uh, those chapters are titled The Beautiful Boy at the Crossroads, A Woman in Distress, Shadow, Screams in the Night, and The Boy in White. Beyond that, it also includes five additional short stories. The Strange Hikizuri Siblings, uh, Narumi's Boyfriend, The Strange Hikizuri Siblings, The Seance, The Mansion of Phantom Pain, The Rib Woman, and Memories of Real Poop. Um, the last one is kind of a, a memoir of Ito's about something that happened, uh, I think, in his childhood. This was followed in 2021 by Censor, which is another full volume length story. This one is a cosmic horror story about a woman who, while walking alone at the foot of a mountain, meets a man who claims that he's been waiting for her and takes her to a nearby village where she witnesses a cult performing their customs, which begin the events of this story. This one is, it's a good story, but the presentation of the volume itself is one of the best, not only of the Junji Ito releases, but one of my favorite just physical presentations of a manga that's in my library. Uh, it has a very beautiful dust jacket that has a fantastic image on the inside of the dust jacket as well. Um, I'm gonna be showing that in the B-roll that I've recorded so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I, I just love the way that, that Viz put effort into releasing this hardcover. It, it is a really, really great looking volume. Now, the next release for 2021 is a re-release from Kadansha of their Cat Diary volume. The Cat Diary Collector's Edition um, is an oversized hardcover, uh, much larger than the, the trim size of Viz Media's hardcover releases, uh, that presents stories about Ito's two cats, Yan and Mu. The stories are mundane, but he uses his signature horrific style to tell them, uh, and that juxtaposition of the style of artwork versus the type of stories that are being told results often in 
pretty funny things. Um, I really like this one. It's a really nice collection and the hardcover is really beautiful. His artwork does look nice on the oversized pages, uh, but I really love the new cover that he drew for this one and as well it glows in the dark, which is pretty neat. Um, the original paperback edition for this one was published back in 2015 and it is still available so if you don't care about having a giant hardcover you can still get Cat Diary in paperback from Kadansha. The next release and the final release for 2021 was Deserter. This one is our fourth Junji Ito story collection um, and this one collects, this is where I'm going to mention one of the older releases. So I mentioned earlier that Dark Horse had done the second release of Tomie. Dark Horse had also released one additional book, and that was titled Long Hair in the Attic, and it was a short story collection that was released back in like 2006 or something like that. Um, whatever the case is, that volume became very hard to find. And I want to note that this volume, Deserter, collects everything that was in Long Hair in the Attic. So in case you were unaware of that, and you've been trying to find Long Hair in the Attic so that you can have more Ito stories in your collection, just know that you do not have to fork over a ton of money or waste a ton of time looking for it if all you want is the stories themselves because they are collected here in Deserter. If you want it because it's a fun collector's item, I understand that, go ahead and try and track it down. But if you just want the stories, pick up Deserter. It has the stories, it's in print, easy to find, and it also has larger trim size. The stories within are as follows. Bio House, Face Thief, Where the Sandman Lives, The Devil's Logic, The Long Hair in the Attic, Scripted Love, The Reanimator's Sword, A Father's Love, Unendurable Labyrinth, Village of the Siren, Bullied, and Deserter. This brings us to 2022, and 2022 was a busy year for Ito releases, but one of them was a re-release and two of them were coloring books. Uh, the first of which was the Uzumaki coloring book. So of course, Viz releases coloring books. They've done not just this one, but they have like Naruto coloring book that's coming out. They've done uh, other coloring books in the past. It, it's not anything new. I think Demon Slayer was one that came out. Um, it's not anything new from them, but it's pretty cool to have this blown up Ito artwork that you can sit there and color and stuff on your own. Um, if you're into it, you're into it. If you're not, you're not, whatever. But that was the first Junji Ito release for 2022. I honestly would not be surprised if we started seeing more Ito coloring books from Viz in the near future, um, but we did get another Ito coloring book in 2022, and that was Junji Ito Collection, a horror coloring book from Titan Books, and this one contains scenes that were adapted in the Junji Ito Collection anime from 2018. So I don't know why Titan put this out four years after the anime was released, but it did come out, and it's still easily available if you want some Junji Ito coloring books. There you go. The first story collection though that was released uh, in 2022 was The Liminal Zone. This is a, a hardcover collection of four new recently published short stories. They were published uh, in Japan in 2021. These were stories that he had worked on during the pandemic. Um, the four stories contained within this hardcover were Crying Woman Hill, The Witch, Aoki Gahara, Spiritual Flow, and Slumber. And the build of this volume definitely rivals how nice the sensor volume looks. Uh, it has a fantastic dust jacket, great images on that, great images below the dust jacket. It's a really, really nicely put together volume and the stories are great as well. I also want to note here that, like I mentioned, these stories were published in 2021 in Japan, so they were very recent and that kind of shows that Viz is trying to do well to get those recent releases of his translated quickly, um, not only focusing on his older works, but getting his newer works out in English for us pretty quick as well. The next manga that was released uh, of Junji Ito's in 2022 was another re-release, and this time we have Dissolving Classrooms Collector's Edition. Just like Kodansha did uh, with Cat Diary the year before, they then, under the vertical label, did a re-release of Dissolving Classroom in hardcover in 2022. However, unfortunately, this one is not the oversized trim like Cat Diary, and instead is the same trim size as the paperback of Dissolving Classroom. And if I'm not mistaken, there's really nothing different between the original paperback that was released in 2017 and the hardcover, except for the cover art, which honestly, the paperback's cover art is nicer. I do have the hardcover, I mostly have it because I believed that it was going to be the same trim size as Cat Diary, 
I will admit that I was pretty disappointed when I received it and it was not larger than the paperback. Either way, it's a fun collection. It uh, has a bunch of short stories that follow the siblings Yuma and Chizumi and all the tragic and terrifying things they cause to happen wherever they go. It contains the following stories that focus on those uh, two siblings. Dissolving Classroom, Dissolving Beauty, Dissolving Apartment, Chizumi in Love, Interview with the Devil, The Return, and Children of the Earth. And that brings us to our final 2022 release, which was Black Paradox. This one is another uh, full volume length story, and this time focusing around a group of people from a suicide website called Black Paradox, who together try to find their perfect deaths but are led by fate to a bizarre destiny. This one was a pretty fun story. I recommend it. I was really happy when it was released in English because it's one that I have been interested in since I first learned about it. Um, but yeah, check out Black Paradox. Uh, that was the last release of 2022, and that brings us up to our first release of 2023, which is Tombs, which just came out this month, March of 2023. This is our fifth and most recently released Junji Ito story collection, and it's also the first to have a variant cover. Uh, there is a variant cover available from Kino Kuniya. I don't know if it's still readily available or not. Uh, it also is supposed to come with a shikishi board of the artwork from the standard cover, the one that you get anywhere else outside of Kino Kuniya. Um, so that's worth noting. Uh, we got some variant action for Junji Ito now. This, of course, collects a bunch of new short stories, uh, including Tomb. Clubhouse, Slug Girl, which is a classic story of his that I'm, I'm surprised it took him this long to release it in English, uh, The Window Next Door, Washed Ashore, The Strange Tale of the Tunnel, Bronze Statue, Floaters, and the story of Shirosuna. So that's the most recent release, but we do know about a couple more collections that are coming out throughout the rest of 2023. Next up, coming in July, we get another story collection, our sixth in Soichi. Uh, of course, this is focusing on the character of Soichi, which is one of his recurring characters from a lot of his short stories. And this is a tentative list, but we can be pretty confident that this is going to collect the following stories. Fun Summer Vacation, Fun Winter Vacation, Soichi's Diary of Delights, Mannequin Teacher, Soichi's Birthday, Soichi's Convenient Curse, The Room with Four Walls, Coffin, and Rumors. And then finally, we have one more Ito release coming in October of this year, and that is Mimi's Tales of Terror. This was, uh, I believe the, the Japanese translation was Mimi's Ghost Stories, uh, and it has six true tales that are based on Japanese urban legends. Very excited to have this one coming out in English. So that brings us up to date with everything through the end of 2023. There's one more piece that I want to mention for 2023, which is also coming out in October, and that is a horror anthology called Betwixt. This is going to be part of of the Viz Media Originals line. And it's gonna feature original stories. I believe there's gonna be six stories, uh, including works by creators like Ryo Hanada from Devil's Line, uh, Shima Shinya from Lost Lad London, and more, including some like Western comics creators, like I think Becky Cloonan is involved in this one. Uh, Ito is going to be supplying the art for the cover and it's going to have a forward by him as well. It's not going to have any story material from him, but I wanted to highlight it because it is going to have a new artwork from him for the cover. The image that I'm sharing though for this is not that cover image, it's just a promotional image, I believe, of the story that Ryo Hanada has done for this that's been kind of kicked around uh, with any mention of Betwixt. We should be getting a look at the cover uh, to this one within the next few months though. So that's everything that we have in English and everything that we know is coming out in English. But those of you who might be a little bit more familiar with some of his oldest and rarest releases might be wondering, hey, well, what about Comics One's release of Flesh Colored Horror? Well, I saved Flesh Colored Horror for last because I wanted that to be kind of the transitionary piece from me talking about what we have in English to me talking about what we don't yet have in English. For anyone who's not aware, Flesh Color Horror was the other release from Comics One that was put out around 2001, um, aside from their release of Tomie. It was a six story collection that had uh, a bunch of stories that have not yet been released again in English. So aside from Long Hair in the Attic, which is now available in Deserter, the other five stories within this collection are not currently in print, and the only way to have them in your Junji Ito collection is to track down this very hard to find 20 plus year old volume. The stories are as follows, Flesh Colored Horror, 
Headless Sculptures, Dying Young, Beehive, and Approval. Those five stories, like I said, have never before been reprinted after that. But do not go, if, if you're trying to find Flesh Colored Horse, you can have those stories in your collection. Do not go and spend a ton of money because I can tell you for fact these are going to be reprinted and I can tell you where they're going to be reprinted. And now we get into my favorite part of the video. Let's talk about everything that has not yet been released in English. Before we get into talking about what's not yet available in English, let's talk about where you can buy all the stuff that is available in English. Now, of course, for those of us who live here in the States, uh, we have tons of resources. We have any Barnes & Noble or you know Amazon or, or even great places like Right Stuff Anime to buy our stuff at really good, good discounted prices. But if you're outside of the US, your choices might be a little bit limited. And one such place that you can buy these if you're in Europe is going to be Walt's Comic Shop located in Berlin, Germany. Walt's Comic Shop offers great selection of comics and of course of tons of manga and that includes a great selection of many different horror manga authors, not just Junji Ito, but you can find Junji Ito's works available over at Walt's. And if you are a new customer of Walt's, you can use code the Omnibus Collector and get free shipping on your first order of 40 euros or more. Thank you so much to Waltz for supporting my channel and thank you to all of you who support me and make things like this possible. Again, if you are out in the EU and you're looking for a great place to buy these books from in English, you can look no further than Walt's Comic Shop and make sure to use that code, The Omnibus Collector, for free shipping. In Japan, there are several lines of books that collect much of Junji Ito's short stories. One such line being the Masterpiece Collection, which is an 11 volume series that's been recently released as a really nice box set. The reason I'm highlighting the Masterpiece Collection is because our Junji Ito story collection hardcovers are direct English adaptations of those volumes. And there are only three left that we have not yet seen adapted into English. Now, if you're paying attention to the rest of the video, you might be thinking, well, the math isn't mathing here, because I only mentioned that there were six of those story collections, including the upcoming Soichi collection. And you'd be correct, because the Masterpiece Collection also includes a two-volume release of Tomie. We have that in a single volume, so that leaves us with three unreleased volumes. That said, we can count on these coming in the not-too-distant future. I don't know exactly when they'll be published, but the three remaining volumes of the Masterpiece Collection that have yet to have been released in English are The Back Alley, Headless Sculptures, and The Groaning Drain. Now, the reason I wanted to mention Flesh Colored Horror before talking about these is because these volumes are where those short stories are going to wind up being reprinted in English. Now, I'm gonna talk about which stories are gonna be collected in those three hardcovers, but there is one more piece of the Masterpiece Collection that I need to mention before we get into that. I mentioned earlier in the video to put in your back pocket the fact that Shiver was subtitled as Selected Stories rather than being subtitled as Story Collection. And that's because Shiver is directly based on a Japanese volume titled Selected Masterpieces, which is more or less a greatest hits volume that pulled stories from various volumes in the Masterpiece Collection. That said, Viz printed Shiver first before any of these other volumes that were adapting pieces of the Masterpiece Collection. So when they printed the volume, volumes that adapted the volumes in the Masterpiece Collection, they removed the stories that were present within Shiver. Now, since I've covered that, we can get into what's going to be in those remaining three Masterpiece Collection volumes, the remaining three uh, Junji Ito Story Collection hardcovers that we will get in English, because there are stories in those volumes that will be omitted. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. First up, we have The Back Alley. This includes the story of The Back Alley, Fashion Model, which will be omitted because it was in Shiver, Falling, The Conversation Room, The Inn, Approval, The Smoking Club, Mold, Town of No Roads, Memory, and Ice Cream Bus. Next up, Headless Sculptures includes Red String, Used Record, which was in Shiver, The Gift Bearer, The Bridge, The Circus Comes to Town, Beehive, Map Town, Headless Sculptures, Dying Young, Shiver, which of course was in Shiver, Scarecrows, and The Will. And then finally, we'll have The Groaning Drain, which has the stories The Supernatural Transfer Student, The Groaning Drain, Blood Bubble Bushes, Hanging Blimp, which was in Shiver, as well as Marionette Mansion, which was also in Shiver, Flesh Colored Horror, Near Miss, and In the Soil. So those are going to come out, and aside from those stories that were already collected in Shiver, 
that's what we can expect to be in those volumes. Now the names of the volumes themselves might change and some of the story names might change. For instance, the original Japanese name of what we got as tombs was Gravetown, but it's the same volume, same cover art, same stories and everything, the same content. Even the, the story that was called Tombs was originally Gravetown in Japan. Um, so the names of these collections might change and some of the story titles might change, but it's gonna be the same content. And that's where we're gonna see those reprints of the stories that are in Flesh Colored Horror. So if you've been searching for Flesh Colored Horror, I'm here to tell you don't worry about it. You're, you're gonna be able to get those stories. Again though, if, if you're just looking for it as a collector's item, I understand. Keep your search going, but hopefully after these volumes get published, uh, there's not as many people looking for it, so it'll be a little bit easier for you to track that down if you're interested in having it for your collection. Now, there's one more piece in the Masterpiece collection that I can cover. I, I feel like there's always one more piece. One more piece, and that was another Greatest Hits type of volume. This was called Selected Masterpieces Warp, and it was released in 2019. This one, again, collects various stories that are pulled from the volumes of uh, the Masterpiece Collection. But in addition to stories from the Masterpiece Collection, it also takes a couple of stories from Fragments of Horror. This one had the following stories. Next Spectre from Frankenstein, The Bully from Deserter, Tombs from Dooms, or Gravetown from Gravetown, The Groaning Drain from The Groaning Drain, Whispering Woman from Fragments of Horror, Slug Girl from Tombs, Flesh Colored Horror from The Groaning Drain, Rumors from Soichi, Gentle Goodbye from Fragments of Horror, Horror. And then one more story that, as far as I can find, has never been collected anywhere else, and that is Soichi Possessed, which I, I believe is only four pages long, but it was a short Soichi story that has him briefly crossing over with Tomie. And like I said, I don't think this is collected anywhere else, and I want to bring that one up because I would be really annoyed if Viz, I wouldn't be annoyed if Viz decides to release this because I could see the point of them releasing uh, this as like a greatest hits volume of theirs so they can be like, oh, if you've never picked up a Junji Ito story collection, try this one out. You know, it, it'll kind of give you an idea whether you like his stuff or not so you can go pick up some of the others because people are always wondering, you know, if they've never been initiated with Ito, they wonder which of the story collections they should get. So this would be a great answer to that. Pick up Warped. It's like the greatest hits. So it makes sense for them to release it, but if they release it and it's the only place that you can get Soichi, I will be annoyed because I don't want to have to buy a you know 25 or whatever dollar volume just for a four page story that I don't have because everything else I have in other collections. Anyway, um, it would be great though, and this is what I'm hoping, it would be great if they include Soichi Possessed with our English adaptation of the Soichi volume of the Masterpiece Collection. Uh, if they can pull things out from the Masterpiece Collection volumes, maybe they can add an extra four page story in as well. So fingers crossed that is what happens. But moving on, let's go into something unrelated to the Masterpiece Collection and that is a diary of embellished patches. This was a 2012 short story collection uh, that is really similar to Cat Diary in that it's not a horror story, but it, it is a collection of stories detailing uh, exaggerations of mundane events in Ito's own life. So if you're a fan of Cat Diary, this is something that would be interesting to you. I think it was just three chapters, three separate stories uh, detailing events in his life um, that were collected within this volume. Next, uh, another short story collection is the 2017 release a Study from the Abyss of Horror, which I've also seen alternatively titled uh, Junji Ito's Study, The Abyss of Horror. This is not just a short story collection, but it also, uh, from what I've read, it also includes stuff like articles and interviews with Junji Ito and additional like special artwork and whatnot that he's done. Um, but the four stories that are collected within here are Yan and Mu, the cats from Cat Diary, uh, No Bure Buken, which means haunted property. Um, that's not part of the cat diary collection as far as I can tell, unless they retitled something. Um, the Return of the Hanging Balloons, or Return of the Hanging Blimp, uh, this would be the sequel to The Hanging Balloons or The Hanging Blimp as we have it titled in English. Uh, Layers of Fear, which was a short story that was published specifically as a celebration of the 30th anniversary of Ito's career. The, his 30th anniversary of his career was 2017 when this collection was published. Uh, and then one last story is Demon's Voice, which was a uh, story in relation to a PlayStation 2 game titled Siren, and it was collected 
collected originally in Siren Maniacs, the Siren Official Complete Analysis book. Now we have one more short story collection that uh, has been released in Japan, and that is from the end of last year, December of 2022, was the Liminal Zone Season 2, subtitled Ether Forest. Uh, so this was four more brand new stories that he wrote that were released in this new collection with uh, really stunning cover art, I, I have to say. When I found the cover for this one, I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, the four stories included are Demon King of Dust, the titular Ether Forest, the strange Hikizuri siblings, Uncle Diginosuke, so we're revisiting uh, the Hikizuri siblings that we saw before in the Love Sickness uh, volume, and Shell of Manjunuma. So this one... With how quickly they released the first liminal uh, zone after you know into English after its Japanese release, I want to say that we might be able to see this one by the end of this year, if not early 2024. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one winds up getting announced for an English release in either the June round of announcements from Viz or the October round of announcements from Viz. So that covers all of the short story collections that exist in Japan, um, but there are a number of short stories that are available that were either not part of collections, have not been collected yet, or they were part of anthology volumes, or they're just different things altogether. There are nine of those, and I'm going to go ahead and cover those in chronological order right now. Um, first up from 2010 is The Summer Graduation Trip, which is actually a light novel by writer uh, Kiharu Hirokatsu, where the last chapter is presented in manga format with artwork by Junji Ito. Four years later, in 2014, uh, Ito did a story called The Mountain of Gods, Precipice of the Unknown, which was part of an anthology called Yamakaidan, uh, which had stories from various other creators. Also in 2014, and this is probably the one of these short stories that I want to see available in English the most, was his adaptation of Snow White, uh, which was from horror anthology comic Blindside, once again an anthology book with a bunch of stories from other creators. Then in 2015, uh, published in Comic Flapper, was Ghost Heights Management Association. 2016 was She is a Slow Walker, which was a short story in the I Am A Hero Koshiki comic anthology, Eight Tales of the ZQN. So this is a short story in the I Am A Hero universe, the zombie manga published by Dark Horse. Then in 2017, he had Mr. Inagawa's Ghost Story Treasure Box. This was a collaboration with the horror radio show host named Junji Inagawa that was published in Namuki Plus. Uh, then in 2018, this one's interesting, the first new Tomie story published in about 18 years, Tomie Takeover. But it was published in three parts that were given out with copies of the Junji Ito Collection Anime DVD Complete Editions. So that anime from 2018, the Junji Ito Collection, if you bought the DVDs in Japan, each of the three DVD sets came with a part of this new Tomie story. As far as I can find, that is the only place that Tomie Takeover has been published thus far. Then skipping ahead to 2021, uh, he did a short adaptation from a scene from the movie The Lighthouse the one with Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. Uh, and this was released as part of a booklet that was given out for the Japanese release of the film. And then the final of these stories that have not been collected elsewhere is Kao Kao Sama and I, uh, and this was for the Daijiro Morohoshi's 50th anniversary tribute, which included short stories in tribute to that creator's 50th anniversary of their career um, from 18 various mangaka. So those are all the short stories of Ito past, now we're in the short stories of Ito Present and Ito Future, uh, which right now he has in the bi-monthly Nemuki Plus magazine. Uh, starting last month in February of 2023, uh, released a new short story in what is tentatively being called uh, Kakugetsu Junji Ito or bi-monthly Junji Ito. So I, I don't know, I, I feel like I read somewhere that he was going to do six of these stories as part of this line, um, but I couldn't find that that to confirm. I might have just making that up, but he is doing more short story work over at the uh, Namuki Plus magazine. So now we're up to date, but there are a couple more pieces of Ito's that I haven't yet covered yet. I saved them for last because they are different from everything else. The first one is a manga, um, and that is Rasputin the Patriot. This was a 2002 series, and it is his longest series to date, coming in at a total of six volumes. But he only did the artwork for this one. It's based on Trap of the State, which is the 
uh, autobiography of ex-diplomat and political writer Sato Masaru about the time that he was held in a Russian detention center. The story is not about Rasputin himself, but uh, the focal character of the series is a Japanese diplomat who is labeled as the Rasputin of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs after he's arrested on suspicions of breach of trust. Uh, so this one's a little bit different, and I, I don't think that the fact that he only does the artwork would give Viz pause to publish this, and I am assuming that Viz is going to be publishing anything Ito from here on out, because after about 2018, 2019, they've, they've held on to his name strong, and that's why the only other things that you've seen are uh, the re-releases by Kodansha slash Vertical of their existing things. But anything else I'm, I'm going to assume is going to be released by Viz. Um, but this one, I, I don't think that that would give them pause, the, the fact that he only does the artwork there. But I think that what might cause them to delay on this one or be questioning whether they should put it out is the fact that it is a six volume series. And that would kind of break the pattern of them doing single volume releases for Ito, uh, which I think has been a really like nicely marketable point for them about that writer because everything is easily accessible. If you want to get a new Ito book, you don't have to worry about getting volume one, two, three, four, etc. In this case, I, I don't know if they would do a full six volume release, but they're definitely not going to be able to do a six in one. That's a little bit too, too girthy. Um, so instead, I would imagine if they do wind up releasing Rasputin the Patriot into English, we'd probably see it in either three two in ones or two three in one volumes. And that brings us to the last piece of all of this. And this is a brand new release uh, from 20 2023, I believe released in February, and that is The Creepy Hole Where Fear is Born. Uh, this one is kind of an autobiography book. It's not a manga book, but it does include some special artwork from Ito himself, um, but it's more or less a book about his creative process, um, where he talks about where his ideas come from, where he comes up with his story concepts and how he writes them and stuff. And this is, it's very different in that it's not a manga, of course, but I wouldn't put it against Viz to publish this into English because they've had a precedent for this kind of stuff by publishing things like that Hideo Kojima volume uh, in the somewhat recent past. And they also did Araki's manga in theory and practice several years back. With how marketable Ito's name is, I think that they'll put anything out, including something like this, an autobiography, and I, I think that it would be a really interesting release either way. And now we're done. I am pretty positive that I found everything. I scoured the net and scoured every page I could find for any release that Ito was involved with. And I know that there's a couple, like, you know, he did a poster or like cover art for something here or there, and I didn't cover all of that type of stuff. But as far as like narrative of his, his short stories, his longer stories, all of that kind of stuff, I'm pretty sure that I covered everything. If I missed a short story here or there, I apologize. You can point it out in the comments down below uh, after watching the video. But I, I, I did a lot, of, a lot of digging, a lot of research, by which I mean I spent a lot of time on Google for this video, and I'm hoping that I picked up on everything. Um, because I wanted to make sure that this was as comprehensive of a guide so that anyone who's viewing this could know exactly what we have and exactly what we can expect from the future as far as Viz Media's quarterly Ito releases. And that's not just me calling it quarterly Ito releases. They literally called it that. Kevin Hamrick, which I believe he's their VP of sales, called them their quarterly Ito releases when he was referring, I think, to Tombs. He was like, our first quarterly Ito release of 2023 is Tombs. I thought it was pretty funny, but yeah, so they do try to get out three or four Ito releases per year on purpose, which means that we're going to have at least another three to four years of seasonal Ito releases um, coming out from Viz, just looking at all the stuff that I covered in this video. So we've got a lot to enjoy. Ito fans are going to continue to eat well, and as long as he's still working, we're going to have more things coming out in English. I'm very excited. I, I am a big fan of Ito, and I know that his, his name has become a, a little bit oversaturated uh, to this point, but it, it doesn't change the fact that he's a fantastic creator. And I, I think that even though he's kind of at the forefront of horror manga, having one of the most well-known and well-recognized names in manga being for horror means that the horror genre itself 
is getting more recognition. And that's why we have now more works coming out from other creators too, such as Viz doing reprints and new releases of the work of Kazuo Umez. And I'm hoping that this continues forward and, and more publishers decide to focus more on other horror creators, uh, similar to how Starfruit Books has begun doing a lot of publication of Hideshi Hino works. So with all that, Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a lot of work that I put in and I hope that that comes through um, and I hope that it's appreciated as well. I, I really appreciate every single one of you for spending time with me. If you watch the whole thing, then you are fantastic. Every one of you is fantastic for, for watching my content. I, I thank you all very, very sincerely. Um, if you have never watched my videos before, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell so you're notified of all the awesome content that I put out on a almost weekly basis. Um, and expect more videos such as this one where I do more creator profiles, uh, covering more creators' works and stuff like this. Maybe not as in detail as the Junji Ito video, but uh, I do enjoy doing this kind of stuff. So if you have made it this far, I greatly appreciate you, as I've said, and I would love it if you would leave a comment below of what Junji Ito release you want to see published in English next. What are you hoping is the Junji Ito license that they announce uh, in June? I want to know what you think. For me, I don't know. I want to see just another one of those uh, story collections released. Either one of those three would be fantastic to me, but uh, you know, Rasputin is always at the top of my list. I think that one would be fantastic. But let me know what you think. Which one are you looking forward to uh, eventually getting published in English the most? Thank you again, everyone, and I will see you all on the next one. Peace out.